So now we want to move on to actually using forms. So far, all the things we've done have had to do with um, using prompts. We use multiple prompts, and sometimes those are a good way to capture information from your user, but it can get kind of tedious if you do prompt after prompt after prompt. Um, forms actually look nice on a web page, giving the user the ability to input something on a page and then have something happen based on that input. So we want to go through a few different exercises using forms and um, give you some experience with that because this is what you're going to be using for the first project and many projects throughout the semester. So um, the code on the right over here creates a form and you might remember how we created a form um, in our first exercises with forms. Uh, HTML forms, very simple. We've got the form opening and closing and the form has a name of form one and then we've got some inputs for first name and last name and a submit button here. But when we worked with forms before, we didn't do anything with them. Now is the time that we're going to do something with them. We're going to execute something that actually changed the DOM. And uh, the, the event is on submit. So this is a different kind of an event that we're going to use. And we're going to say when this form is submitted, we want to execute this function. And this function is going to create a variable named first name, and it's going to get that from the value from the form. So that's from up here. And you just have to do get element by ID, then the ID name of the element, and then dot value. Don't forget the dot value. I've done that a few times myself. And then I want to get the last name. And then it's going to create the variable your name with um, concatenating first name plus a space plus last name. And then what it's going to do is send this message to the inner HTML of your name in this ID. And it's going to change, please provide your name above to hi plus whatever the name is, welcome to the site. Now one thing I want to point out is this return false is something that's important to have when you're executing forms on, on a site. Because when you submit, you don't want it to refresh the page. There's really nothing that it should return. The, the form and the HTML page should stay stat static while the DOM element is changing. So um, if you are hitting enter and nothing is happening on your page, quite often it's because the return false is not there or it's not used correctly. So you can see that return false is used um, before we get out of the function that submits the form or this, this function that uh, happens on the submission of the form. So let me switch over here to the first form. Um, and so here you can see the code that I have in Text uh, Wrangler. I just copied and pasted what was there. I want you to go through and look at all the items in the script so that you can understand what is happening. The variables being created based on what's coming from the form for first name and last name. We're creating a your name variable given uh, concatenating the first name plus the last name. And then we are doing a get element by ID to change the inner HTML of your name, this, to this message spitting out your name. So let's open this one up and try it. Get the one called form. So instead of a prompt coming up, we have this nice script here that um, presents us a form looks better, isn't as jolty as a prompt. And uh, it can, of course, be designed and should be designed in a well-designed page. But for now, just to demonstrate it, we'll see what this does. I'm going to submit it. And it does say, hi, Cindy Royal, welcome to the site. And I can put any name I want in there. If I want to say, Becca Silvas, hi, Becca Silvas, I want to say Josh. Larson, anything I want to put in there. I can even put in junk, whatever I want to get in there. That's what's going to show up down here and welcome them to the site. So you can start to see how forms work on all the web pages that you go to when you log into any sort of mail account or your Amazon or Facebook. They're taking an input from the form and then they're manipulating that variable throughout the site when it's needed. I wanted to also point out that you can change other things other than the inner HTML with get element by ID. I have some code here that shows how you can change styles. For example, we could 
change the font weight to bold of your name. So if you would take this line and add it to your code before the return false, take a look and see what happens. And there are other things that you can do in terms of style. You can change things like color or any other CSS. So start thinking about how powerful this type of a feature can be. So it was a pretty easy one. Again, you just have to copy and paste this, but I encourage you to get this script, really understand what it's doing, and then make modifications and play with it to get it to do some different things as you go.